Hello YouTubers and fellow hams, Kevin, KB9RLW here. I thought I'd do a video on uh, my current field day antenna. With field day coming up, uh, it seemed appropriate. For those of you watching this in the future, field day was coming up. It is um, the latter half of April 2016 right now. So we've got two months till uh, field day. Uh, a few years back I built a magnetic loop. Um, you can see other videos in my channel uh, showing off the loop. And I used it at a field day, and it worked pretty well. But it was kind of unwieldy. It took up most of the back of the car. You know, it's a three-foot diameter copper pipe ring, so <laughs> pretty big. Um, I decided to come up with something different for field uh, operations. Uh, you can put dipoles up into the trees. A lot of people do that. Um, that takes a lot of time setting up, you know. I came up with three... Um, criteria for an antenna. One, it has to be quick. have to be able to get it set up in a very short order. Um, no muss, no fuss. Quickly up and operating. Uh, two, cheap. Don't want to spend a lot of money on it. And uh, three, it should be fairly broadbanded. Um, the magnetic loop, for example, performed very, very well, but it's so narrow that you were constantly retuning the antenna every time you moved frequencies or bands. And I wanted something that would be uh, a little bit broad, more broadbanded, easier to work with, um, perhaps using uh, the antenna tuner built into my radio, which a lot of them have nowadays, or an exten external tuner to allow me to have the most bands on a single antenna. Now you could do something like that with a doublet um, or just a regular dipole, but again, you got to throw wires up into trees and uh, setup time is uh, quite lengthy. Well, here's what I came up with. Um, I decided to go with a vertical and uh, verticals, they can take some time to set up too because of radials, right? Well, my solution was to use an end-fed wire design, something like the PAR end-fed wire. Um, what you do is a, is a very high to low impedance matching network at the end of the wire, a, a 9 to 1, uh, and an unbalanced to unbalanced. Um, here's a diagram of a uh, un un, 9 to 1 un un. You can pause the video if you want to study this and wind one yourself. Uh, what happens with this is the coax, going back to the radio, you have to have at least 20 feet of coax, longer is better. The shield of the coax becomes your counterpoise. And the antenna performs very well without having to have any type of a local ground connection or counterpoise. You can do that if you want, but it's not necessary. So I took this end-fed wire design and I rotated it vertically. So I've got a matching network at the base, right at the ground level, the 9 to 1 unbalanced to unbalanced, and what's basically an end-fed wire in a vertical configuration. This gives me the, that radiation pattern that's very low takeoff angle, which is great for DX. Um, the other nice thing with the end-fed uh, wire with the 9 to 1 is it's fairly broad-banded. So what I used is uh, a 15-foot telescoping mast, which you can find at sign stores. They use them to display banners outside of uh, restaurants and such. Uh, they're probably quite cheap. I got mine for free. It was being thrown away by a, a fast food restaurant. Um, and I experimented and found that a 15-foot piece of wire end-fed at the bottom was perfectly resonant on 17 meters with uh, 20 feet of coax coming back to the radio. So, great, 17 meters. Well, how broadbanded is it? Using the antenna analyzer, I went up to 20 meters, and it was about uh, 2 to 1 SWR. So, yeah, a little high, but you could still operate at 2 to 1 SWR. You know, if you kept your power down or you're using a QRP radio, you, you're, you're safe to operate at 2 to, two to 1. Um, in the other direction, I went up to 15 meters, and it was about 2.3 to 1 SWR. So, yeah, that's getting in the sketchy area, but essentially, without a tuner, you could probably operate 20 through 15 meters 
on this 15 foot vertical without uh, without issue. With an antenna tuner, like the tuner built into my uh, Elecraft KX3, I'm able to tune the antenna um, down as far as 30 meters. Uh, its efficiency goes down when you go to a, a lower frequency than what the uh, wire is resonant at. But uh, it was still working. I was able to tune it for 40 meters, but it doesn't radiate very well at all for 40 meters. Here's a video of me setting up the antenna for demonstration. So here's the complete antenna for transport. It packs up very nicely. It doesn't take up much space. We have the advertising sign pole, telescoping pole, a fiberglass pole to put in the ground to hold the advertising pole. And in one small case, an optional antenna tuner. If you have a radio with a built-in tuner, this is not necessary. And our antenna. Approximately 20 feet of coax with a 9 to 1 unbalanced to unbalanced. This is a commercial one by Ballin Designs, but you could wind your own. The main radiator. This hooks onto the mounting loop at the top of the uh, telescoping pole, and I have an alligator clip. This is 15 feet long. With this 15 foot wire, the antenna will be resonant on 17 meters and uh, tunable. Well, you could actually operate it. It'll be down to 2 to 1 on 20 and about 2 to 1 on 15. So you could actually operate it without a tuner on three bands with a tuner um, 20 meters all the way up to 10 easy with just this wire. If you want to go lower, if you want to go down to uh, 30 meters, 40 meters, and even 80 meters, this is 27 feet of wire. And when this is clipped on and tossed up into a tree, you have a total of 42 feet, which makes a pretty good vertical for uh, 40 and 80. I'm using these little alligator clips. Let me get this in the view here. They're kind of wide, and when I clip them together, like so, they make really good contact over four surfaces. They're fairly strong, not going to come loose at all. And that would lengthen the antenna. So that's the entire antenna. Very quick and easy to set up. There we go. That was about two minutes. And the antenna is up. Okay. So with a 15 foot wire, 17 meters, we're showing an SWR of about 1.3 to 1, which is uh, pretty good. You could operate it on 17 without a tuner. If we drop down to 20 meters, yeah, we're up about 2.3 to 1. So if you kept your power down, you could operate without a tuner. Um, but uh, really, to operate other bands, you, you want to use some kind of a tuner. A lot of modern radios have a built-in tuner. But we can get down to 20 meters. Uh, somewhat compromised but still operable without a tuner. Let's go in the other direction. 15 meters. We're at uh, 1.6 to 1. So without a tuner you could operate this uh, antenna on 20, 
17 and 15 meters as it sits with a 15 foot wire. Using the antenna on 17 and 20 meters when the band was open, I have made contacts over into Europe, down into South America, up into Canada, out to the west coast. Um, it works quite well. With a QRP radio and 5 watts, I talked to a guy in Puerto Rico and um, he, see, he gave me a, he said I was S9, a little bit over. So it, it works very, very well. In fact, on 20 meters, it compares to my resonant 20 meter dipole. Um, it, it does very well. So that's my field day vertical antenna. And uh, like I said, quick and easy to set up. Broadband, it operates, or cheap, cheap. <laughs> um, and broadband, it, it, it operates quite well across a, a, a range of bands. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching, 73 and good DX.